Welcome back to how to create a membership site with zero coding. This is part number eight, how to create a good site structure for your membership site. So how can members navigate around your site? How can people who aren't logged in log in and how can we make it so that your membership site is just really easy to access so people can get what they pay for and they're absolutely happy with your service. To create a good site structure, I'm first assuming that you've created a website that's based Based on WordPress, you've added a membership plugin. I'm using Wishlist Member, and you've added some content to your website as well. Please note that in this tutorial, I will be using a membership plugin called Wishlist Member, which is a paid membership plugin. If you want to follow the steps that I'm teaching you how to do it, you will require Wishlist Member, and you can get it through my affiliate link. Just go to pelt.co forward slash wishlist. If you don't have wishlist member, then parts of this tutorial won't work for you and you'll have to work out how to do some of these things yourself with the membership plugin that you've chosen. There are five main user experiences that we are going to cover in this lesson. There's the experience for the logged in users. Now this will be the majority of people. This is your members. Once they've logged in, how do they navigate around your membership site and access your content? There's also the experience for people who aren't logged in yet. What will they see of your website. There is the experience of people logging in. So what happens as they log in? There's the experience of people who are registering for the first time. And then there's also the experience of those logged in users who want to manage their account. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So let's start with the logged in people. There's two things that we're going to be covering. First is the menu, which is probably the most important part of your site navigation. And also we need to make a decision about the home page. I'm going to be using my membership site on Property Plus, which is an Australian membership site where I find properties for my members that are positive cash flow. It's not a perfect membership site by any stretch of the imagination, but there are some things that you can learn from this site. First, let's talk about the menu bar. Now the menu bar is this section up the top where they can access different things from your website. And there's a couple of rules to follow. The first thing is have as little as possible in your menu bar. You really just want the main things that people are going to be accessing. So we don't want a hundred different things in the menu bar. We only want, you know, four, five, six, as little as possible. Uh, you want no drop downs. So we can see as I go over account, there's this drop down logout. Uh, we'll talk about logout as the exception, but basically we don't want them to go to extras and then there'd be all these drop downs. We don't want hidden things from our customers. We don't want them to go diving into drop downs to find things because people just don't enjoy that. And on a mobile phone, which is where a lot of people will be, they just don't want that. Um, instead of using drop downs, use what I call portal pages. So if we go to my extras tab inside my membership site, this is effectively a portal page. So I've got some courses there, I've got some tools for them, I've got some bonuses. And so if you've got too many links and too many things to fit in the header, consider having portal pages. In this case, I've got the extras portal page. And so consider doing that instead of drop down menus. Now let's talk about how to create your menu. The first thing we need to do is to log into the back end of your website. To do that, you go to yourwebsite.com, whatever that may be. For me, it's my.melee.co, and then you add forward slash wp-admin. So you go to this address and then log in, and you'll be brought to the dashboard. The next step is we wanna add the plugin nav menu roles. That's the name of the plugin. And the reason we're adding this is it allows us to control our menu based on whether someone is logged in or whether they're logged out, which is going to prove to be very important. So to add that plugin, we go to plugins, add new. We then go to the search bar and we simply enter nav menu roles and click enter. We should see it come up first. We click the install now button and we then click to activate the plugin. The next step is to go to appearance menus. So on the side here, we can see appearance and we go to menus. We now need to go ahead and create a menu. So we can see this button here, create a new menu. So go ahead and click that. We now need to give our menu a name. In this case, I'm just going to name it default menu and we click the create menu button. 
We now need to add some pages to our menu. Now I suggest we add the important pages that our members will want to access, an account page for them to manage their account, as well as a join button, a login button, and a logout button, which we will adjust so only logged in or logged out users see it. So let's go ahead and do that. First, let's add our important pages and our account page. So we can see on the left here, all of our different pages. So I've got my account page here that I've created. So you'll need to create that if you haven't done it already. And then I've got a whole bunch of other pages that I could add. Let's say I wanna add tutorials, tools, community, and maybe an advanced page. I then click the add to menu button and then, then add it into our menu here. Now I can click and drag them around as much as I want. Let's say I want the tutorials at the start. Uh, I want the community second. So you can drag all of those around. We wanna make sure that these pages can only be seen by members. So what we do is we click this arrow to get the drop down, and we can see the display mode. We can click it to logged in users only. Only. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of these ones to show it to logged in users only. We now need to add our join button. So I'm going to go down to custom links here and what I'm going to do is put a link to my sales page. In this case, it's going to be melee.co and I'll just type the word join and that's what's going to appear on the menu. Click add to menu. We can see join here. Now I only want logged out users to see this join button. So I just make that adjustment there. We now need to add our login button and it's simply the same process. We go to custom links and we put my.melee.co forward slash login and I'll show you how to create a login page in a minute. And then we go ahead and we write the word login and we click add to menu. Again, I wanna make sure that only logged out users see that. So I click on the little arrow, make sure it says logged out users. Next, we wanna create our logout button. And again, we're going to use the custom link, but we're going to have a bit of a long URL. So we're going to have HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then my.melee.co, you'll change that for your membership site.com and then you'll have this action logout and then you can redirect them. And so where it says my.melee.co here, you change that to wherever you want to redirect them. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one and I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And then I'm going to put in logout and click add to menu. I will put this URL in the description below so you can just go ahead and copy it and paste it into your website and just simply change my.melee.co in both of these areas to whatever your website is. I only want logged in members to see this so I'll click on it, click for logged in users and I only want this to appear under the account section so I'll go ahead and make that tiered under account so it'll appear as a drop down, just like it does on On Property Plus. Once our menu is set up, we then go ahead and click Save Menu. So now that we've created our menu, we need to actually add our menu to our site. And to do this, we go to Appearance Customize. And now depending on the theme that you have active, which is something we'll talk about in the next lesson, this may look slightly different, but it'll be pretty similar. Basically, you need to find the area for menu menus and then you have menu locations and your primary menu you just need to set to default menu. We can now see that how our menu has come up and so we've got everything there. We just go ahead and click save and publish. So that covers the menu. Remember, have as little as possible in there. No drop downs except for the logout and use portal pages where you need to. Now let's talk about your homepage. You're either going to wanna have a portal or updates on your homepage. So if we look at On Property Plus, I've got updates. And so these are the new properties I list every day. That's because people sign up for my membership site primarily to get access to these property listings. An example of a portal, however, would be this tool that I'm subscribed to, Real Estate Investor. When I log in, I'm brought to this page and we can see they've got all these different links to the different part of the site. Site. If I scroll down, they've got support center, webinar, video tutorials, uh, a whole bunch of different things here. So basically the homepage is a portal to all the different parts of the website. So you need to decide whether the portal is going to be best for you or whether the updates are going to be best for you. If you decide that you want to have a portal, then you're going to have to create that portal page. So go into your backend, 
go to pages, click on add new, and we're going to go ahead and add a home page. You can now customize this with clickable images, with text, so people know where to get to. Here's a super, super basic example of a portal page where I just have the links to the other pages in my website. So when someone sees the home page, they can get go across to the tutorials or the interviews or the tools or wherever they want to go. Now you can get more fancy with this and add images and videos and things like that if you want, but I just want to show you this as an example. We then go ahead and publish that page. You then want to click on add new again and you want to add a page for your update. So I'm just going to call this blog or you could call it updates or you could call it whatever you want. So go ahead and publish that. You don't need any content in this. Now go to settings reading and where it says front page displays, change this from your latest post to a static page and for your front page, select the home page and for your post page, select the blog or the updates page that we just created and go ahead and click save changes. This is what the home page used to look like with the most recent posts here. If I go to the home page again, we can now see that it is our portal page. So that's how you create the portal page. If you did want your updates to be on the home page, then in the reading settings, just make sure your latest post is ticked instead. So that covers the logged in user experience and the main things we need to consider are the navigation or the menu to allow people to easily jump around our website and also the homepage, whether we're going to have that as a portal or we're going to have that providing updates like I do. The next user experience I wanna talk about is the not logged in user. And the things we need to focus on are the menu to make sure that it's accurate for the non logged in users. And also we need to decide whether if someone tries to access content and they're not logged in, do we send them to the sales page to sign up or do we send them to a not logged in page? First, let's have a look at the menu. So with our menu, we just need to make sure that content that is for members only is ticked for logged in users only and content that is for people who are logged out only should be ticked for logged out users. You may also wanna have some content like the support that is for everyone. So I've logged out and we can see that the menu bar on the side here only shows join, login or support. It doesn't show any of the members content. However, this homepage as a portal is still showing and I don't want non logged in people to see that. So to fix that, I'm going to go ahead and log in, go to pages, all pages, find the home page and click edit and then scroll down. And for content protection, I'm going to put yes, protect this content. And then I'll select my membership levels. And now we need to decide when someone tries to access that page, when they're not logged in, are we going to send them to a sales page or a not logged in page? You would send them to the sales page. If a lot of people are likely to go to your membership site that aren't yet members, or don't know anything about your site. However, I find this is a poor user experience for members who are trying to log into your site. If you're gonna keep sending them back to the sales page, that's gonna be quite annoying for them. So I prefer to create a not logged in page and I'll show you how to do that. So first we need to create the page. So let's go to pages, add new. I'm going to call this page login. So I've put some text, you are currently not logged in, you can log in below, or if you aren't a member, you can register here. So I'm going to go ahead and hyperlink this register here and send them to my sales page, which in this case is melee.co. We now need to add a login form. Adding a login form is really easy. Simply click on this WLM shortcodes, go to shortcodes, and then find this one WLM login form. I'll then go ahead and click publish. So the page will look a little something like this where it's got you're not currently logged in, they can click to register or they can go ahead and log in. Now if you force people to use their email address as their username like I do, I suggest simply adding the text, remember your username is your email address. And so then it looks something like this so people can easily log in and they'll remember their username is their email address. We now need to make sure that when people aren't logged in, the website knows to send people to this login page. And to do that, we go to wishlist member settings and under here, setting configuration system pages, which should load automatically. You just need to adjust the non members page. So click on that and select the login page you just created and then go ahead and click save down the bottom. Now, if I'm logged out and I try and go to the membership site, my.melee.co, it will actually redirect me to this login page, which we just created. And so I know I can log in, or if not, I can click the register here, which will take me to the sales page. 
So we've created the logged in user experience. We just went through the not logged in user experience and we created this not logged in page and made sure our menu was fine. Well, what happens when someone's actually logging in? The only thing we need to do now is set what's the first page they're going to see after they log in. So after someone fills out this form and clicks log in, where do you want to send them? And in most cases, it's going to be the home page. So again, in wishlist member under settings in the configuration system pages, which should load by default, we want to scroll down a bit and where it says after login, we just want to go ahead and select the page that we want them to go to after they log in. So this might be the home page and we go ahead and click save. So now when someone fills this out and logs in, they'll be automatically taken to the home page. They won't be taken to the back end of your website, which is what would have happened otherwise. So that's the login in experience, really easy. We just had to set the first page after login. Now let's talk about the new registration experience. So first someone's got to pay for your membership site and we'll talk about that in episode number 11 about how to collect payments for your membership site. They then need to fill out the registration form, which will look something like this, which you can customize yourself. And we talked about how to customize that in episode number six on how to set up wishlist member for your membership site. Now we need to look at the first page they go to after registration. So after they pay and they fill out this final registration form and click submit registration, where are you going to send them? So there's two different options you have. The lazy way is to just send them to the home page of your site, which is where the portal is for your entire site anyway. And to do that, we go back to wishlist member into settings, make sure we're on configuration, system pages, scroll down and where it says after registration, just go ahead and select the home page and click save. Alternatively, you may want to actually create an introduction page to say, hey, welcome to the site. Here's a tutorial on how to use the site. And to do that, you would simply go to pages, you would click on add new, you would add a page, let's call it welcome. You would put in your welcome text and tutorial. So this is a thing that they would see after they register, click publish. And then back in wishlist member settings under the system pages, we would go down to after registration and we would select the welcome page. So now after they fill out this form and click submit registration, they'll be taken to a welcome page that says, hey, welcome to our website. Here's the deal, check it out. So that's the basics of new registration. We just really need to focus on the first page after registration. Lastly, we're on the home stretch guys. We just want to look at the managing account experience. If someone wants to manage their account, how do they go ahead and do that? So the biggest thing we want is an account page where we can put all this stuff on there. We can put a reset password, adjust subscription, support and cancel. These are the four main things people are going to want to do. And then we'll also have the logout as a drop down, which we already covered. So we've got our account page here. We've got the logout as a drop down, which we already covered. So let's go ahead to this account page. And currently I have nothing on there. So let's go ahead and edit that. And I now want to add an option for them to reset their password. So I've added some text, change your password, click here to reset it. Now we need the link that they're going to click and to find it, go to yourmembershipsite.com. So for me, it's my.melee.co and then do forward slash WP dash login dot PHP and click enter. You'll then be brought to this page, click on the lost your password button down the bottom and then go ahead and copy the URL. Then highlight the text you want to link click the insert edit link, go ahead and paste it in and click add link. Now when someone clicks there to reset it, they'll be brought to this page where they can enter their email address and get a new password. So we now need to help people adjust their subscription, get support or cancel their account. Because we're not using any code or automation, the easiest way to do this is to just get them to fill out a form and then we can adjust it on the back end. So I've put in some details here on the account page to adjust subscription, get support or cancel your account. There are WordPress plugins where you can add forms directly into the page. However, I find most of them are clunky and they look really ugly. What I prefer to use is a site called Typeform. So just go to typeform.com and we'll start by creating the adjust subscription form. So simply click create a type form, click on create a new type form and start from scratch. Let's name it and click start building. First, we wanna collect their email address, so let's drag across email. 
I'll put in the description your account email and I'll make this required. Then click save. I now want to add a multiple choice question so I'll go ahead and put that in. I'll make this your current subscription and I now need to add some choices. So I've added in four different options and I'm going to make this required and then click save. I'm then going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'll click on it to edit it and I'll make it say change subscription to and I'll go ahead and click save. I can preview my type form if I want. So I can see it asks for their email, their current subscription, which they can tick, and then they can change their subscription, which they can tick what they want, and then they can submit it. We now need to go ahead and save our account. So put in a username, your email address, and your password and click save account now. We've created our account. We can now adjust the design if we want. We can then configure. You then just wanna to go to self notifications and make sure it's going to the right email address. Here's the default message and you can see it's going to put in all the answers. So I'm completely fine with that. Let's go to distribute. We now just go ahead and copy this link and under adjust subscription where it says click here to adjust your subscription, we'll add a link to that and we'll get it to open in a new window and click add link. Now for support, we'll go through a very similar process. So for my support, I've just added your name, email and comments. I can then simply copy that link. I can go into my post, highlight it, click insert edit link, paste that in and click add link. I'll do the same for cancel your account. For the cancellation form, I've added your account email, a yes no question, do you wish to cancel your accounts? Just so they confirm it. And then a question, what did we do wrong? So I can get some feedback on why they're leaving. So let's go ahead and click distribute, copy that form, highlight the text that we wanna link, click insert edit link, paste in that text, click add link and then we can go ahead and update. Now when I view the account page, I can adjust the subscription if I want. If I click that link, it'll bring up this type form where I can enter in my email, current subscription and change my subscription. I've also got a support form and I've got an option to cancel their account. All of these emails will then be sent to me and if we need to adjust their payments, their subscription or cancel, uh, we can do that really easy and I'll show you how to do it in lesson number 12, the last lesson in this series. So that's it, we've created our managing account experience and we've covered the five main user experiences for our membership site. The golden rule is easy access, no guessing. So when you're creating your site structure, just remember easy access to all the stuff they paid for and don't make them guess where this stuff is hiding. Make it really simple for them. So that completes part number eight, how to create a good site structure for your membership site. In the next lesson, we're moving on to how to make your membership site look great. So we'll take my very basic membership site, which looks like this, and I'll show you how to change the theme, how to change the look of it, so you can customize the look so it looks exactly the way you want it, looks more professional, and it's a lot easier for people to navigate. If you wanna get access to all of the course materials, or if you have any questions that you wanna ask us, simply go to pelt.co forward slash MS, which stands for membership site, and you can get your questions answered over there. Or if you want help, then we do have services that help people set up their membership site. Just go to pelt.co forward slash services to see what we have to offer.